Welcome to Massive Beers. My name is Matt. We do a lot of beer reviews. We do other things, but mostly beer reviews. And this, I've actually never seen stateside yet, so I'm super pumped to give it a whirl. This is uh, the Dull. It's their Aura beer. Yeah, it's evil Aura beer. Um, so, um, the Dull, their Aura beer, is one of my favorite kind of Belgian just rando jams like every night and then i see it and i go ah, i want one of those um Schittily knocked is the king shit of fuck mount when it comes to uh Didal, but the or beer i'm a big fan of but i saw this and i was like wait oh it's like or beer i was like oh no that's our beer not or beer and it, it is a Didal Brewers, uh belgian jam coming in at let's see if we can get this tag off here 8% alcohol by volume, and from what I remember, this is like a little funky wild jam. It's been a while since I had a funky wild jam, so we will do our due diligence and dive into this sucker and see what happens. I should have a bottle opener somewhere. So I have a drawer full of crap. It's my regular bottle opener. Oh, I'll use this thing here. This will be perfect. So I'll recap or jammer. Let's see what's what. So it's been a while since I've had any doll. Ooh. It's not dirty glass mafia, it's spotty glass mafia we have going on right now. Let's just do the just that much. We will recap this for good measure. <sighs> perfect. There you go. Label wise. I mean, classic Belgian stylings. I mean, they're, they're, they're all Dutch. No, they're Belgian. Um, but, yeah. From nice little neck wrap to this little sticker on the side over here that you have to put on there because they can't sell it here if we don't put a barcode on it. I'm a fan. Beer-wise, I mean, it looks all the part of... Uh, listen, um, or beer is a Belgian triple, I believe, or Belgian strong ale. Leaning on treble, that's kind of where this kind of lands here. You know, it's got that rich kind of golden glow going into kind of ambery kind of coloring. A bit of head on this, nothing too crazy. If I give it kind of a hyper aggressive swirl, you get a little bit of head back, but not so much. So, looks the part of a bottle condition kind of high ABV Belgian golden. Good nose. I don't know if I'm going to dig this. Caustic, um, acidic. Uh, I think it's going to pull up my cheeks, but maybe a little bit enamel ripping. Um, I was kind of looking for a date on here. They usually are pretty good about putting their dates on here. It could be under this little American sticker over here. Um, yeah, we're not going to stress about it. It's old, I can tell you that much. You're not going to be able to see it probably, but there's definitely a merc ring on this thing. So we definitely have some time in this. I would say at least several years, to be perfectly honest with you. So what are we smelling? Caustic, kind of like grapey, vinousness, but a little bit of kind of like acetone vibes. Very vinous. Very fruity, very vinous. But there is that like acidic kind of enamel ripping, slightly acetone thing that... Mm, old me would be scared because the heartburn's coming, but... This dude's on medication, so you know what? I'm just gonna dive in. Cheers, y'all. Yeah, it's still it's it's very very tasty. I was gonna say delicious, not for me at least. Is this really really punchy malt base to it? Um, like not sweet but rich. You know, like adult candy, adult desserty. Is how I would put it. You know, a lot of adult desserts have this richness to them without this overt sweetness. That's kind of how this comes off. That acidicness, that tartness there, it's not as aggressive as I thought it would be, but there is that slightly medicinal acetone component. I don't know if that was there at the beginning, but it's definitely there now. It's not hyper aggressive, so it's not going to ruin the beer. I almost assume that it's going to go away over time. Like after I get to my third or fourth sip, it'll be like acclimated to it and I'll be good to go. Super vinous, super skinny, like very much peach skin, um, you know, grape skin. 
that's how it kind of leans. That second sip is so much better. Kind of blowing off and get a little bit more acclimated to it to where that acetony thing is kind of becoming a secondary thought. I think I might love this now. Yeah, this is kind of delicious. <laughs> the more I sip on this, the more it becomes something that I think I love to no end. Sometimes you get a little breathe. Yeah, this is delicious. <laughs> delicious. I can't say delicious tonight. I don't know why. Mmm. I love this beer now. Yeah, after that initial punch of that acetone kind of aggressiveness and being prepared for this huge acidic thing, not even close to that. I've acclimated to that to that Estonian medicinal thing. And now what I'm left with is something akin to somewhere in between like a Belgian golden, a wine, and a mixed fermentation beer. In a very, very beautiful way. Like like every sip I take on this is infinitely better than the last. That skinny thing I was talking about, that that grape skin, that peach skin. Um, think about all those non-overly sweet kind of um, tartar fruits. I mean, you even get like a tropical skin on this, like a kiwi skin, something along those lines. It's running a gamut of fruitiness. It's, it's, it's every, every sip brings a bigger level of a bigger, more flushed out kind of fruitiness to it on this nice sweet and like back and like back to that what i mentioned in the beginning this kind of malty richness that non overly sweet kind of adulty kind of desserty this this is delicious this is absolutely fantastic yeah that initial i've never seen a beer go from like i think i might not like this to no this is absolutely fantastic this might be like the winner like the leader in the clubhouse, to flip the script that aggressively to go from something that I'm cut out. I don't know how this is going to go. To every sip I take afterwards, it just gets better and better and better and better. It's kind of a fun ride, to be perfectly honest with you. Yeah. It's like, it's starting to finish more like, it's not plum. Peach wine. It's almost like getting to like a peach, a peach white grape wine, like a combination of those two. That's kind of how it's finishing for me now. Like, and when I say wine, I, I mean more like, um, like a Japanese plum wine, not like a, you know, a French or, or like a Spanish wine, kind of like more drier, more aggressive, more, you know, uh, that kind of thing. I think a bit more sweeter wine again, Japanese wine, plum wine, think about that, but more of a white grape slash kind of peachy kind of combination in that sense in a very very good way this is absolutely fantastic it was a little bit pricey i think i think i paid like close to like eight bucks for this uh, it's not all that pricey for the, the doll beer but for a while when i was like you know what screw it i'm like oh, you know what i just found the dates on it i forgot the doll puts them on the cap this beer is seven years old it was bottled december 2015 um that's fantastic that's fantastic i think it's one of the better kind of mixed firm slash wild beers i've had as late and it's absolutely mount rushmore and it was one of those kind of like like you ever watch like youtube stuff you're on YouTube right now, so that was the dumbest thing I ever said. But, you, you know, you watch, like, um, you know, uh, uh, Track and Field or something like that, like, where someone, like, like there was a little kid who, like, lost her shoe. Not even a little kid, like, you know, like a late single, like a 9, 10-year-old girl recently in 2022, like, lost her shoe. And then everybody else was, like, freaking 50 meters in front of her and she ended up just smoking everybody else that's kind of how this beer kind of comes off for me it's like some that just like 
messes up at the start and just like so far behind no way this thing is gonna win and it's just like it won and i can't believe it won and it's one of the favorite things to happen to me because it won that's this beer it's fucking delicious it's so good good god the doll yeah this are i'm not surprised that they made delicious stuff like this but to have it come off as as negative in the beginning and again that's sometimes you gotta have you know, lambic spears like this. Sometimes they need to kind of blow off and breathe a little bit. That's more my mistake than the spear. But man, once this thing gets feet underneath it, it's absolutely fantastic. I just want to drink the crap out of it now. Mm. Is it one of the better sour beers that I've had? It's like yeah, like Mount Rushmore status, honestly. Like easily. Value, like I said, I got this. I want to say like seven, eight bucks. It's not that expensive for the doll, but, you know, if I can get this for, like, <laughs> 15 bucks for a pack, staple. Um, and leave you with, if you like, well, we like this. I haven't done that much often, but if you like good beer, that's it. If you don't like this, you don't like good beer. I know, it sounds pretentious, but such is life. My fridge is telling me it's time to quit. Um... Let's talk about it. Have you had this beer? I'm really curious about your experiences with this beer. Have you had it recently? Have you had a fresher bottle? Have you had an older bottle like this? How did it come off for you? Because that's where I really want to know, um, you know, kind of learn your experiences about like how this beer treated y'all. So down there, let's talk about it. Let's talk about Dole. Let's talk about Mixed Firm. Let's talk about Venice beers. Let's talk about the whole thing. There you go. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the review. Hopefully you're enjoying a good beer right now. Cheers, y'all.